Okay, in this video I'm going to begin exercise 3 of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 71. The question I'm going to do is number 1. So it reads, a projectile is fired from a point on a horizontal plane with initial velocity of initial, uh, initial velocity of two, 21 i hat plus 28 j hat meters per second. And you're asked to find the greatest height above the ground and its range. Now, just initially, just, uh, unlike chapter 2 where we talked about speeds, this time we're talking about velocities. Why? Because in chapter 2 you are given something like 28 meters per second, like that. That is a magnitude, because it's a number, and therefore there's only half the things required to make it a vector. However, if we have 28 i hat, then we know it's 28 units in the i hat direction. We might say its, it's, it's unit is that meters per second, and that means it's got, uh, it's got a magnitude and direction, making it a vector. And the vector associated with speed is velocity. So now we're talking about velocities. Anyway, so let, the first thing we need to do is sketch this. Now I'm going to say once we're going to say that our let me think. We're going to say that our x-axis is like that, y-axis is like that, and we're going to define our unit vectors i hat and j hat like that. And I'm just do, defining those to the side, to be honest, just so they're not in the way. Now I'm going to superimpose this. This uh, draw this x y plane again like this. Oh, look what I did there! I cannot believe that. Y and x. Anyway, so I'm, this is drawn larger, except I'm only drawing the parts that I need. So this is x, and this is y like that. Now we're told the project particle is projected from a point on a horizontal plane. That means, for example, like this is horizontal, meaning it's parallel to the ground. However, if if it was if it was on a, a hill or an incline, then it would be fired like this, for example, right? But we're not dealing with that. This is the first question, and we're going to say if it's horizontal, it means it's parallel to the x-axis. Now, it uh, yes, we're, we're told that it is a projectile. Therefore, it will go in. It will fire from initial point, go into the air like that, and drop down like that. We're all familiar with this. I'm going to say that this here is um, that's the vector u. That's the initial speed. We're going to define gravity here like that. Gravity is also a vector because it is, a, it is an acceleration. And Just again we're going to say g is approximately 9.8 meters per second squared like that. So the first thing we need to do is talk about the x-axis and the y-axis and we'll define our u, v, a, s, t u, v, a, s, t. Alright, so let's fill in the information we know. We're told that it's fired from a point in a horizontal plane with initial speed of 20, 20 of initial velocity of 28 i. So there are 28 units of units of speed in the i hat direction, which is here. That's in the x-axis. There are tw uh, there are, sorry 21, not 28. Excuse me. And that there are 28 units of uh, speed velocity in the the y direction. The acceleration in the y is minus g or is g. So I'm going to say minus 9.8 or I'm going to call it g like that. The acceleration in the x-axis is zero, and we're asked to find the greatest height above the plane. Now, greatest height, just very quickly, imagine if you were a person here, let's say, I throw the hat upside down, let me start again please. So there's, there's me, and I throw a ball into the air. So the ball goes up into the air like that. Now what will happen, we know the ball will come straight back down. Now, I'm assuming you'll, if, if you ever throw, even if you throw your ball into the air if you want to see this, but if you throw something into the air, it will stop at its highest point. It will come to rest. So we'll say at its highest point, v is equal to zero because it has stopped. And then it will begin to speed up again as, it, as, it, as gravity accelerates it towards ground. So it will start with a u, it will go to a zero, a, 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 a v equals zero, and then it will accelerate to v is equal to v again. So if you want to find our maximum height above ground, that's the point at which the, 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 the particle comes to rest. So let's do that. We'll say, well, we'll first of all we'll fill in the other, other bits of information we have here. Remember, v is equal to u plus a t. So here, v is equal to 21, excuse me, 21 plus 0 t, which is equal to 21. Here it's 28 plus g t. By the way, t is the same because, of course, there can only be one one time associated with the particle. Next, we know that the distance. We we could use anything we want here, but we know if you, you do use, just apply the the formula, we'll say 
S is equal to U plus V over 2 times T, and you're going to get that this is 21T. And here, we're going to get, uh, I'm going to say UT plus a half AT squared. So 28T plus a half GT squared. Like that. All right. So we're doing okay so far, filling all the pieces of information. So it's time to start analyzing those pieces of information to give us something, something back. So, we want to find the greatest height above ground. Like I said, excuse my phone, I should put that in silence. The greatest height above ground is when the, the, the particles come to rest. Now, point, point, important, the very important point here is it's the speed or the velocity in the y direction that has, co that has come to rest. Alright? So what you'll say is that v sub y, if you want to call it v sub y, that's fine, is equal to 28 plus gt and that will come to zero. And the reason you do that is you're trying to find the time at which the particles come to rest in the going upwards. So we'll say that 28 is equal to minus gt, t is equal to 28 over uh, 28 over minus 28 over g. And you might say to yourself, well, how come I, how, I can't have a negative time? Well, you don't, because look, we know that g is equal to minus 9.8. So in actual fact, your time there is positive. So we know it's 28 over g. All right, and let's see what that is, 28 over g. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at 28 over g for the moment. So we'll say t is now 28 over g. Like that. There we go. Next, we want to find the, the the height above ground. So we want to find a distance. So what we're trying to find is the distance s sub y at the time 28 over g. So we'll say that s sub y is equal to 28 times 28 over g plus a half g times 28 over g times 28 over g. Well, that's a square, of course. All right. So. Uh, what else do we need to know there? Let's just, can we square that out? And uh, let me think there now. So we have 28 squared over g plus 28 squared over 2g is equal to s sub y. So that's 3 over 2 times 28 squared over g is equal to s sub y. Now, what's the answer to that? The, the distance there is 40 meters. All right. So the, the point there is that at 40 meters, this particle has come to rest. Uh, and that's the maximum height. So the maximum height above ground is 40 meters. So the next question we asked is to find the range. So the range is the maximum, uh, the maximum, we'll say, distance or height, but this time along the x-axis. So the question here is, well, what is uh, what do we know? Think about it. If something is... If it's something has gone its maximum distance, what's the condition? And the condition is that there the, the there is no height. The height is equal to zero. Obviously, if it's if it's at its maximum distance, it's hit the ground again, and therefore the height s sub y is equal to zero. And what you do is you get s sub y. You find out the t the time at which the s sub y is equal to zero, and plug that into s sub x. So you find the time at which the, the height is zero and you find the distance traveled along the x-axis at that time. So what we'll do is we'll say s sub y is equal to 28t plus gt squared over 2 is equal to zero. Therefore we have a quadratic. Remember if we have we'll say a squared plus b cubed plus c to the fourth. We'll say anything where there are powers we call that a polynomial if it is a, and the degree is the highest power. So this one here would be a degree of four. If the, that, that wasn't there, this would be degree three. This one here would be a degree two. If the polynomial is of degree two, as in this case here, because the highest power is two, it's called a quadratic. So I'm assuming at this stage we're well used to solving quadratic equations. So let's just do it again anyway. So we have s sub y is equal to 20, uh, we'll say 28, T, uh, well, I'll read you, read you that. We'll say, um, well, let's just let's read you that. So what we get is we get 280 t minus 49 t squared is equal to zero. 49 t squared 
minus 280t is equal to 0. Now you can solve this of course using the formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. There's not, nothing wrong with that. However, if you look here, you'll find that we don't have a c. So it's actually a lot easier just to uh, take out the t. So say t is equal to 49t minus 280 equal to 0. Two things multiplied together to give 0. One of them must be 0. So either t is equal to 0 or 49t minus 280 is equal to 0. And therefore t would have to be equal to 280 over 49 like that. So that's the time at which the maximum height, sorry, that's the time at which the height above ground is equal to 0. 280 over 49. And look, the other time at which it's equal to uh, the height above ground is 0 is that t is equal to 0, which is perfect. That's when it's actually taking off. Obviously, when it's taking off, it's the height above ground is equal to 0. So just let's plug that into the distance travelled in the x-axis. So we'll say that 21t, oh, that's incorrect, 21 t is equal to s of x, so 21 times 280 over 49, and that's equal to 120 meters like that. Alright, so uh, that, that's that, that was reasonably straightforward, but if you're not getting a hang of it, well that's okay, we'll, we'll keep going on with chapter, or exercise 3a, and I guarantee you before the end of it, you'll have got the hang of it. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, and subscribe to my channel.